Tell me a little bit about your experience at the conference today. I know this is your first time. No, it's uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I get to lift our head and uh, look at what other people are doing. Uh, we've been busy building our business for about three years, Wonderful. but uh, I think there's a lot of great ideas that uh, that we can look at, and also a lot of people we can partner with. So it's it's very exciting. So what message did you bring to the conference about the industry and about your business today? Well, yeah, our, our message, I'm not sure it goes well with the conference, but what we're realizing is that we deliver a high-end business service. And uh, our clients actually don't care so much about how we deliver it. Right, uh, but this this conference is really about what happens in the back end in terms of using the crowd and the power of the crowd. So it's a it's a little bit of a, a dichotomy, but uh, it's it's valuable nonetheless. And you're very interested in the crowdsourcing industry and where it goes, and you sponsored this uh, part of this conference, so very definitely you're a partner in that way too. Uh, absolutely, and very very interested in in be, being able to harness the power of this going forward as well. So. When, uh, when you think about the challenges that you see in, in crowdsourcing uh, sourcing versus uh, what you're seeing today running your business, are they parallel? Are, are they some of the same things? But, uh, what are you taking from these panels? Yeah, I, th I think we deal with the same issues in a, in a different context. Uh, the same issues around how do we engage and motivate our workforce, uh, how do we convey our value proposition to the client, uh, You know, how do we break through all of the noise about all of the things that are out there. Uh, and also I feel like uh, we have some unique challenges. We are creating a uh, new category of business service that just so happens to be delivered through the crowd. So we have kind of front end market challenges as well as, as on the back end. Okay, so expand on that for me. What's changing in 10X and, and how do you intend to do it within yeah. the next year or so? So we feel like we're fundamentally disrupting the way knowledge services are bought by large companies. If you look at the world today, uh, you have high end management consulting and then on the other end of the spectrum, you have point data, whether it's uh, you know research reports, boutiques and things like that. But we feel like what's lacking is a business service that allows companies to ask very complex, specialized questions around new market opportunities, market assessment, competitive analysis, regulatory dynamics, innovation scenarios, things like that. And for those type of specialized questions, we'll go out and find the people in the cloud that are absolutely suited to answer those questions. We bring them together, we facilitate their collaboration, and we develop high quality solutions. And this type of service does not exist. So we like to think of it as kind of very targeted consulting or maybe something like uh, expertise on demand that's crowdsourced. It sounds like your workforce is, is has the high level of expertise. How do you build a pipeline of that workforce and, and keep it motivated? Sure, absolutely. So we obviously, a monetary aspect uh, is, is one element to it, but we feel like uh, we actually have a quite diversified workforce from very high-end subject matter expertise to uh, engagement managers to business analysts to researchers to very junior people just out of college or MBA programs. Uh, those people are motivated by different things. Some people want to belong to an organization. Some people want to uh, grow, be mentored, have a you know growth path. They want to use us as a platform to enter into the workforce. And for the more senior people, they want to have access to challenging client problems, work with others, uh, you know, stay plugged to the you know the latest and hottest topics in their industry, and so on and so forth. So there are a number of levers that we have to pull, if you will, to to make it all come together and work. And, and who do you think right now in business is your biz, biz, uh, biggest market competitor, or do you have one? I don't think we have a, a competitor per se. I would, I would say that there are a lot of substitutes of, in the market uh, that I don't think are the right solution for what companies are looking for. I, I would, I would even put it this way. I think. Uh, our challenge is the complacency, or, or maybe uh, to put it another way, uh, there's no outlet for a lot of businesses to get answers to these kind of challenging questions in a very fast, efficient, inexpensive way today. So a lot of, a lot of business problems go unsolved, and we feel like we bring a utility, almost a day-to-day uh, business utility for companies to be able to go out and get that critical information whether they're developing and formulating strategy or whether they're actually executing their business. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because we talked to uh, some companies uh, that, that help companies uh, stimulate the creative process. 
you have to know the questions before you can even ask them. Yeah. So when you go into a company and, you, yeah. like you said, they're at yeah. a level where they don't even realize some of their own potential, whether it's technically or whatever knowledge sure. they're bringing, how do you stimulate them to start thinking using their existing workforce and yours sure. uh, to realize the value? Sure. Right now, in, in, in our current stage of development, and we're a three-year-old company that's been in the market for a year and a half, with a lot of our big clients, we handhold them through uh, iterating through a set of questions to make sure that gotcha. we're, we have a very tight definition on exactly what they want to know, the high-level questions, the very detailed questions, uh, the KPIs that they want to understand when they're, when they're doing a project. Uh, we also have an online model, so for companies that are more comfortable with us, uh, we will take them online where they can iterate with us through our platform to refine the scope and it's it's a very lightweight engagement model right so you have a set of questions uh, we'll work with you over 24 hours and we'll get to a uh, kind of a scope and we'll say we can do this for so much time for such a fee and then you get to decide whether you want to move forward or not exactly. Yeah. Exactly. if I'm in the crowd and I'm looking at 10x what do I want to think about going to work for them well I think that we uh, our, our motto is that we want to democratize access to knowledge, right? And for our experts, we want to give them access to world-class companies and, and challenging problems, right? So what we care about is what people know and not who they know, right? So in that context, uh, you know, we, we allow people to come in and demonstrate what they know. We put them on interesting projects. As they prove themselves, they get more and more challenging work. Uh, they get better and better access to clients, they get to work with a peer of people, uh, they get to be mentored, they get to mentor others. So we are basically trying to recreate what happens in organizations, but in a very fluid and a very flexible and dynamic way. So we do it on your own terms, right? Anytime, anywhere, and based on what you want to work. So that's, we give you the total flexibility, uh, in addition to, of course, uh, paying for your, your knowledge and your work. Course. Yeah. And I mean, giving them, like you said, access in many ways to large firms that may, you know, yeah. maybe would never look at their resume. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, that's a great way to think about it. Yeah, and and we feel like we are at a uh, stage with with all of the professional networking and social networking for any problem, however complex or specialized, we are able to go and find the people that are ideally suited to solve them. Right? And so, you know, I mean, we have people from every corner of the world working on some very interesting projects. Which brings to mind, yeah. are you using an algorithm for that or are you using a contest model? How do you? We, well, are, so we are a macro work site. So when you break down piece of work, whether it's research, the analysis, whether it's putting together a deck, whether it's putting, synthesizing a, you know, uh, a storyline or something like that, there are a number of different tasks. When you break it down at the very micro level, we have contests and, uh, and at other levels, we select people that are dedicated to it and so forth. So we have a number of models okay. that are in play in parallel. Okay, and yeah. does the, the enterprise buyer get to be a part of, is that the contest, that, that that's one where the buyer maybe, would, or buyer or enterprise would say, okay, I'm going to select the worker or there's no... No, uh, a lot of times our early clients want to sometimes see who the experts are or who the engagement manager is that works on a project. Uh, but very soon after, they don't care so much. Uh, but over time, we also have clients that want to directly access this pool of expertise mm -hmm. for follow-on projects, right, mm -hmm. for workshops and things like that. So uh, the model is, is very flexible. Great. Well, listen, I want to thank you for your time today, Good. and uh, we'll stay in touch, and, and we'll see how 10X does in next year's conference. We hope to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.